We're here with Mr. Ryan in Mandeville, repairing a guitar. We're replacing a tuner. So okay. what's the size for those at home that might want to bypass? All yes. Of that? Okay. That yes. So it. you were looking. If you're if you have an Epiphone guitar, which is um, crafted in somewhere overseas, um, they they tend to use metric instead of the standard. Okay. And so this is a 15 millimeter socket. All right. Great. All right. So we're going to save this little part here. Yep. And now the tuning head, the damaged part's got to come off. So next up, we need to remove the tuning gear itself with these yeah. two screws. So we might be able to get a little peek inside to see what's going on. So inside of a tuner, you can see that this little key has like a, it's kind of like an auger. It's got like a spiral screw to it. Mm -hmm. Kind of see that as you turn it, um, you kind of see a little. And in kind of toothed into that spiral, you kind of see it through here. There's a little gear in there. See that little golden wheel with those teeth in it? Kind of right between the gap. There's a gear in there. And when you turn, these little screws turn this gear. You see, as I, you can see the gear moving. I don't know if you can see it well. Little so bit. Yeah, yeah, so as you turn the key, this little spiral grabs this gear wheel and turns it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of when people are shopping for tuners or upgrading their tuners, they're like, well, what should I look for in a tuner? One thing that you can look for is um, a good gear ratio that you like. So it depends on the, what kind of tuning you do. If you're the type of guitar player that changes tunings a lot and goes to drop tunings, you may not want a very high mm -hmm. gear ratio to get the very fine tuning. Right. You may want to keep it kind of towards the middle. But generally what a gear ratio is, is how many turns of the key you have to make to get the post to turn once. So uh, very high or very fine tuning ratios are like 21 to 1, 21 turns for every one, or up to 18 and 16. Now, once you get to 15, you're kind of in that middle of the road. You can still find very high quality tuners in this area. These are geared towards players that might change tuning a lot. Or um, the best are like the banjo tuners. They don't even use it. They use a special kind of gear and everything. And then you have the lower cost ones, which are going to obviously like have the lowest gear ratio. Still adequate, they can still do the job of tuning the guitar. It's just that, you know, you just have to nice. get a little more, you know, a little, a little more fine, fine tuning and adjustment. Let's put the new one on. First thing we're gonna do, attach it like so, and just get the screws remounted. Now we gotta replace that little barrel that goes over there. The tuning post. Now this is another thing that doesn't have to be extremely tight. It's just, you know, just snug on there. You know, just yeah. like where it ain't gonna go nowhere. Yeah. 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 You might need a new set. These strings are looking a little worse for wear. I have some spares on me, but I can't promise that. How often do you strings. change the strings? That's typically. a great question, Ryan. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you gotta change your guitar strings. It really depends on the type of strings you have, but for most people that have normal uncoated strings, if you play regular, regularly enough, you're probably gonna need to change it at least every month, or if not, you know, wow. you can't wait a couple <laughs> months. But you know, you'll notice. Uh, you'll you can even look at where you don't play the guitar. If you if you're good about not touching your guitar here or looking in other areas, you can kind of see the difference in like the luster. Sometimes it'll be like the strings will be much shinier up here. Mm. In another spot. In fact, my headline is a great example. Uh, I put these strings on about a week and a half ago. So they're still okay. I mean, they can play, but I can already tell. So if, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, Ryan, but you can kind of see how much shinier yeah. the, the strings sure. are past the headstock. Shiny. And you can even see they're shiny up to this certain point. And then right about there, you can see where the luster starts going away. You can see where my fingers have been. Especially when you first get a set of strings, you even start seeing the dark spots emerge, like where your fingers tend to land. Mm -hmm. Do they just lose tone over time? Well, they, they can. I mean, honestly, these strings are going to sound fine. Strings are going to sound pretty fine. They will lose a little bit. It depends on the player, too. Or is it just... It like depends on how... Of it, or something? Yeah, it, there's so much that goes into this ring, I can, too. I can go on and on. But so in, yeah. in, in strings, if you wash your hands often before you play, that's not going to be as much problem. If you play with dirty hands, the dirt in your fingers is going to get between the wines and the wine strings, adding mass and all this stuff. So when it's when it flops, it's got more weight and it has to be too tighter than before. That's why they pop too. People don't realize that. So don't dirty old strings are under a lot more tension than brand new strings because they have a lot more weight 
not just in mass, but also sometimes the corrosion can add weight too on the, on the surface. So I should stop eating Cheetos while I play? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, just, just taking a microfiber cloth, like the one sitting on top of the piano, and just mm -hmm. wiping your strings up and down, maybe before and after you play, that makes a huge difference. That cleans them up. There are even some products, I don't have it with me, but there's some stuff called Fast Fret. You can like rub it on your strings. It's almost like a, I, I promise, it's, it smells like it's just baby oil, but mineral oil or something. But don't put baby oil in your strings. <laughs> That's just a guess based off fragrance alone, but yeah. Instead of going into the bridge from the back, like I'm going, some players will come into the front and wind over it and do what they call a wraparound tailpiece. What that does is it actually, uh, it changes the angle that the strings take off the bridge. You can get a, a higher break angle. Some players claim it makes the guitar play differently in a preferable way or, you know, sustain, I don't know. Yeah, if you change strings often, this is like a three-in-one tool. You can wind the posts, you know, kind of like with the little tuning peg winder here. You can um, you can trim the strings when you're done with a little trimmer, and it's also for an acoustic guitar player. You have a bridge pin puller to get those pesky little pins out. Okay. Let's replace the old string. It's fun replacing a string that was once on the guitar because the little angle that you make on the head on the little post is already there for you. Ooh. The hard part is getting it to behave. But we'll get there. Now, when you, when you change the strings, you want to. Here's a little tip you can do, but there's not a lot enough length on the string. But when you have a brand new string, it's much longer. You can string it through here and you get the angle just about. You want the angle on the, the hole. You want it to be like kind of like this. You want to make a nice sharp turn so that when you when you grab the extra string and when you pull, you can sort of pull in a Z shape. And that's gonna catch the so you can put see how I, how I can pull it and it's not gonna slip out. That allows me to keep tension on the string like this, so that when I go to wind. I'll get a nice wind around the peg. Now, one thing to make sure when you wind is make sure it goes underneath the string in the next wind. That way it'll wind down the post and give you a better break angle at the nut. Not for better tone, like the people that do the tailpiece thing on the bridge, but just simply because it's, it's a, it works better for the way these guitars are designed. That's the one that's always out of tune, too. It really? I thought it was just well, my so guitar when, before I started There's got to be a scientific there, reason There is, for that. And, and specifically, it has to do with these and these guitars in general, Epiphones and Gibsons. Not because, and like, I love the Epiphone and Gibson guitars. I own a few myself. But one of the things about the G string and the D string with a lot of guitars, and this isn't just with Gibson. This is pretty much any guitar player that designs a larger headstock that puts the tuners close to the edge. It's all about the shape you choose. You know, guitars, when they design these guitars, they chose these shapes based off look, kind of. They, you know, they didn't really think much looks about great. the design. Yeah. Yeah, it looks got a great shape. Open book, you know, like, you know, that's what they call that little yeah. pattern. Yeah. Um, you know, very nice. And but here's the thing about tuners and tuning keys. You can't place these keys into the headstock because that's going to make this go further back, right? Okay. So you have, you have to kind of mount them close to the edge. So guitar, like more modern guitars, have been designing their headstocks in a way where the headstock itself tapers in so that the, the little strings can kind of uh, sit in a better, so they don't break off the nut at this high angle. That's actually why it's always the D and the G. It's because of this, this extreme break angle. Huh. Now, that's not to say it's, an, it's a flaw of the guitar. If you have the nut properly cut and set, and that takes time, some of these things that unfortunately just can't happen at the lower end of manufacturing, they just can't take the time to do these things by hand. If you look at the higher end guitars, they will, like a luthier can, can cut and, and wrap the nut in a way where it doesn't catch along this line. And it doesn't, and again, you can find Epiphones that don't exhibit this issue. You can find custom shop Gibsons that do it. I mean, it's just one of those things where it can develop as they have the guitar. Did it, didn't do it when you first got it over time, you know, for whatever reason, it could happen. But yeah, that's why, that's why you always get the D and the G. They kind of need a little bit more care and stuff because of this, it's that break angle there. Cool. Well, yep. that's, thank you, Ryan. We've been chatting with Mr. Ryan Tingle, yep, expert guitar technician and oh, instructor, no. and, and um, getting the guitar fixed up here. So thank you, Ryan. Thanks, All right. Ryan.